kicker Dustin Hopkins set to get this one going. And we are underway from the Superdome. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. They're led out by their quarterback out of Fresno State, Derek Carr. It's been fun to watch his development through the years, and right now what you see is a very confident quarterback that's a strong sense of self, totally understands the offense, and knows how to get the ball to his playmakers on the run. 14 yards there on the first play from scrimmage. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. A first carry now. This is Alvin Kamara. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. That's a really good gain right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle, everyone's going to want to touch the football. There'll be a lot of chattering now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage. Carr completes it. And yeah, he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. It'll be a Saints first down on a pickup of 13. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball, how much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. So here are the Browns now with great starting field position. Orchestrating the offense will be a man who, of course, won a national title back in his days at Clemson, Deshaun Watson. And he's exactly the man you want in control of your offense. Excellent arm, good zip on the ball, not afraid to use his legs when he needs to. And what he's excelled at doing is making plays when the first read isn't available or when the pressure's about to get to him. They'll give him four yards there, and that will bring up second down. Watson now to throw. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Marshawn Lattimore. And the Saints are going to take over at their own 41. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. They'll start in excellent field position following the INT. Now after the INT, it's Carr. There's Chris Olave. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's second down and a yard. Now it's the veteran Jamal Williams. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. Carr now on first down. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. Second and ten. some trickery they fake the spike Carr can beat you in a lot of ways the scramble there a perfect example as he gets the first I can't be sure how much of that was planned pre-snap but it certainly opens up some avenues for their offense and if he can stay a threat to break off those kind of runs it'll pull defenders away from coverage and open up some choice throwing lanes for him moving forward Kate is running back Camara and able to break one tackle but then quickly brought down but a nice little gain. They'll wind up getting seven on the play and it'll be second down. Kamara up the middle and he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26 yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Carr now to throw. That is hauled in by Michael Thomas. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. 23 yards on the play. Time to give some credit to the big fellows, the offensive line here, because you've got to have good protection on crossing routes, because you've got to give your receiver time to work all the way across the field. 
that time able to scan the field, spot his receiver moving left to right, and make a good, accurate throw. Thank you, guys. First and goal from the three. This call down near the goal line. And he is in for the score. Touchdown, New Orleans. Michael Thomas, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Saints take the early turnover and convert it into an opening touchdown. Well, this feels like something we'd see more commonly, CD, in a college game. They give it to the receiver down here in the red zone, but it winds up successful. Yeah, Martin, I think you think it's less likely to find running space to the edge down here close to the end zone when things are so condensed. But a lot of times you end up focusing on the running backs, and they're able to slip it to the receiver, and it resulted in a touchdown. And he will get in to make it 8 nothing. After the touchdown, here's Groupie to kick this one away. And here's Jakeem Grant from his end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. They threw an interception the first time they had the football, wound up leading to a touchdown the other way. How do you approach drive number two? Going back to your game plan coming in, everyone has matchups that they like better than others where they think they have an advantage. Dial up some of those plays. Try and go to those spots and get your offense moving. Throwing again is Watson. Got an open man. That's David Njoker, the tight end. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. And they need two. Here's third down. It's caught, Cooper. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. One quarter down, 8-0 the score. The start of the second quarter, and it's the Browns in control of the football. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. A good pick up there for the Browns. 15 yards. They run again on first down. Chubb. Demario Davis there on the stop. They went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? Watson's throw hauled in by Bell. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. To throw is Watson. And he is caught. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Back to throw, Watson. A quick throw there is incomplete. And their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. And he'll go down at the 28. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Watson. And he's going to have to eat this when he's down. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Here's Dustin Hopkins now to try the field goal. On the left hash, officially it's called a 51-yard attempt. Hopkins' kick is good. And they get on the board, trailing now 8-3. to three. 
So from an offensive perspective, at least able to get on the board here right in front of the two-minute warning. Yeah, now it's time to talk about complimentary football, isn't it? Because if the defense can force a three and out, there could be enough time on the clock that they can get the ball back for their offensive guys and maybe put some more points on the board before they have. The New Orleans offense set to take over. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Here's Carr to throw. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Defensively, celebration time because they finally forced an incompletion. He was perfect throwing the ball to that point. Yeah, but from his viewpoint, they didn't force the incompletion. He just missed. That's how hot he is right now, and that's how he wants to continue to throw the ball. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot, it'll be fourth and inches. From this vantage point, they've got the lead here. So for me, that'd be enough to go ahead and punt the football and let my defense defend the long field. If you go for it, you don't get it, then you really put your defense in a tight spot. Yeah, but we never know what people ultimately will decide to do here on fourth and inches. tight ends here on first down. Now this time, Carl throw. He lets it go deep for Alave. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. They geared up and took the deep shot downfield, but it turned out it wasn't one-on-one -on -one coverage. Extra defenders in the area, and that one winds up incomplete. Carr again here on second and ten. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. Here comes the seventh play now of this drive as this is third and ten. On the end around, this is Thomas. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. 14 yards is the pickup first down New Orleans. But when we go back to our conversation with the defensive coordinator, that type of a play was not a surprise to him. He expected trickery in this game, yet somehow his defense, they still took the cheese and got caught in the mousetrap. And this is going to be intercepted. And the Browns are going to take possession here at their own 47-yard line. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. The Browns drive about to get started. After the interception, here's Watson. He's got the connection to Cooper. So the completion good for seven there, and that'll bring up second down. Now Watson. To the right side, and he's got more complete. 27 yards there, a first down. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Here's Watson. And he'll hit the slant route. That's caught by Cooper. And the Browns are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. Here's Watson. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. David Bell from four yards out. And the Browns will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. Offside, defense. 
And that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you <laughs> did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. Hopkins with the Offside. extra point. And the lead is now two. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. And the Saints going to go on offense one final time in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively, they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. They'll keep it on the ground again here. And he gets us to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. A gain there of 21 yards. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Now Thomas. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. And you see the clock almost empty, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. This is Thomas. And he's going to be taken down here as that will lead us to the end of the first half of play. So we come upon halftime, and it's the visiting Browns with the lead. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. This has certainly been a fun one to watch so far. We knew this was going to be a battle, and we have not been disappointed. This is the kind of game that could wind up hinging on which side can play mistake-free football the rest of the way. Both teams going through their final halftime adjustments. We're about ready to get back to football. And to bring you the second half from the Superdome, Let's go back to Brandon and Charles. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. The third quarter starts with a run by Chubb. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from the lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. That's a big loss to three, and it brings up third down. And right where they set it down started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. Throwing on third down, Watson working the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. They give the chub out of the gun. And now off to the races, down the right side. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. On first down, it's Watson. And he's got his receiver, Cooper. Touchdown! Deshaun Watson finding Amari Cooper. And the Browns take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Great quarter route there. Not only able to catch it, turn it upfield, okay. and get into the end zone. It usually involves a little bit of an extra move, doesn't it? You've got to get them thinking that you're moving to the middle of the field and you're breaking away to that corner. Boy, that was well executed. Extra point good by Hopkins. And the lead is now 17 to 8. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And that one will bounce.
it's out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now urgency has to start setting in. You can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially, but you have to do it without pressing, because pressing, that'll lead you into bigger errors. On the ground, it's Thomas. The Saints first down there on a gain of 11. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. On play action, now Carr. It won't be a sack, but it's no gain, and it brings up second down. They run with Thomas. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll try a little trickery here on the end around. And he'll go down to the ground at the 39, and obviously that's well short of the first. Not your conventional play call, but that's okay. You probe the defense a little bit with some of everything in your playbook. That way they have to account for everything as the game moves on. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Now that fourth down decision, unconventional but effective, and they indeed come up now with a first and ten, a fresh set of downs. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Oh, design run for their wide out. And a great job there to read that one defensively. They strung him out, would not allow him to cut up field. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. And he is going to have a Saints first down by about a yard as they're able to convert on third and two. Now they'll throw with Carr. And a dangerous throw there, incomplete. He threw that into coverage. It was nearly intercepted. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. And a great job there to lead that one defensively. They strung him out, would not allow him to cut up field. Well, now they'll try the end around. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. We have played three quarters. But we'll return with more after this. Back now here live in New Orleans. It's the Saints who hold the football, but they're trailing as we begin the fourth quarter of play. And they'll run it here. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. And now they're in the hurry up. And they'll go on the ground. And that one covered beautifully. Their defenders stayed home, and they'll stop him behind the line. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And just good downhill running there as he'll take this to the 15-yard line. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. And they'll run it here. And that one covered beautifully. Their defenders stayed home, and they'll stop him behind the line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Well, they've had success on the ground on this drive, and that makes the defense more likely to overcommit to stop the run as they did on that play. But keep in mind, it makes them susceptible to play action passes as well. And again, the run defense stout this time. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. Throwing his car on third down. 
And that is incomplete. And that drive was going pretty darn well. Three previous times converted on third down. But on that one, the defense rose up and said, enough of that. And his kick is good. And that'll move him back within six now. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. They've been rolling the last couple of drives, each inning and touchdowns. So this game is flipped. They were down. Now they're up with the football. We'll see how they handle it. Can we get a spy on the headset now between the head coach and offensive coordinator? Because they've been in attack mode. Had to get back into the game. Now they have the lead. Do you stay on the attack? Or do you dial it back a little bit to try and protect this little My cop out answer would be somewhere in the middle. I think it's going to be a fine line, is it not? I think you're exactly right. But I do think if they can stay aggressive, and keep them on their heels, they'll be best served that way. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. 60 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Here we go, third and one. Gut check time on both sides. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get... The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. The Browns send out their punter now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. It's taken to the 26. 43-yard punt, but they get nine back on the return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first. At their 35-yard line. And they'll start the drive here with an end around. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. Hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Ball on the 36 now. Here's a second down and nine. And they'll go on the ground. And he'll go out of bounds. It appears right at the 45. It appears it'll be a few inches short, so nine yards on the gain officially, and it'll be third down. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And it's a room to maneuver. And he will be taken down, but not before he gets this to the Browns' 25-yard line. 30 yards there, and of course the first down as well. And they'll run it here. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. 25 yards. And the Saints are an extra point away from taking the lead here in the fourth. And to me, the key to a wide receiver run like that is getting around the first edge guy. It's often like a pump return to make that first guy miss. Because if you can do that successfully and get upfield, we know good things can happen. He's able to take that one into the end zone. Here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion. They'll try and run it in. And he will get into the end zone. So they knew what they were doing all along, right? Now to lead two here in this fourth quarter.
after the touchdown. Here's Karuki to kick this one away. Breaks through the contact. And what a return. Great field position all the way out to the 48 there. This is first and 10. Watson. He's got the connection to Moore. Yeah, he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Uh, he's been quiet all afternoon. He may have just come up with a play of the day right there, though. Obviously, it's not the volume in which you get done. It's the quality, and that was a quality catch right there. From the gun, it's a give to Chubb. Down to the 28. They'll come up now on second down. Watson to throw. He's going to drop this one down for Chubb. The sound reverberating here in the dome. This is third down. Now Watson. Oh, he had a man running free, but he overshot him, and it's incomplete. You're not going to get many better opportunities than that to take the lead in the fourth quarter. He's got a man wide open. But oh my goodness, just too much air under the ball. And he knew it right away. Hopkins' kick is good. And the sideline celebrates as they have taken the lead in the final minute. All right, so time to reset here. It's a huge kick there, gives them the lead, but they've got to be careful that their celebrations aren't a little too premature. You're exactly right about that because there still is time for the other guys to run a few plays and get in the field goal position. So this defense is going to need to come up with one final stop if they're going to get out of here with a victory. So time for Carr and the Saints. Down 20-19, to 19, 40 seconds to go. Now, their lead is evaporated, but they still have a shot on first down. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Now we'll get a quick timeout called. By it's number two as the clock will stop with 33 seconds remaining. And they'll go on the ground. And he's going to get out of bounds with the first down. So an ideal set of circumstances. Chains and they save that final timeout. And they'll go with the ground attack here. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone, following a pickup of about seven or eight. So that time they got the left guard with a hole. And let's face it, in today's ball. You might have that 330-pound guy you're supposed to clear out of there. You might need a little bit of extra help by grabbing the jersey and trying to ride him out. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. Anytime the offense shows what they call a shot play or a chunk play where they're trying to get big yardage, sometimes people just call it gadget plays, and you hold it to a game that we just saw there, you feel pretty good about yourself as a defense. timeout will be called so they're in field goal range with three seconds left and now it all rests on the right foot of their kicker with three seconds to go this for the win and a timeout comes in the whistles blow with three seconds remaining So on is their kicker, and it's down to this. He made his only attempt earlier. This for the win. And his kick here is good. And Bourbon Street, it'll be alive tonight. The Saints have won it. That was an excellent come-from-behind victory, Charles, especially there in the fourth quarter. Both offense and defense were clicking. They're going to feel good about this one. Boy, are they ever, because the deficit they faced certainly wasn't small. They obviously did not give up on that one. And in the end, how about that come-from-behind victory? They'll cherish this one for a while.